In today's video, I want to talk about how to minimize the risk of getting deceived. And I say minimizing the risk because I consider it to be impossible to be 100% sure not to be deceived or misled. And um, many things I will say will be uh, based on the Wikipedia article on deception. And I will provide the link um, in the description as always. Let me start with a quote from the article in one of the opening paragraphs. Deception includes several types of communications or omissions that serve to distort or omit the complete truth. Examples of deception range from false statements to misleading claims in which relevant information is omitted, leading the receiver to infer false conclusions. And then later it says, Deception itself is intentionally managing verbal or nonverbal messages so that the message receiver will believe in a way that the message sender knows is false. Intent is critical with regard to deception. Intent differentiates between deception and an honest mistake. But in this context, I would like to ignore intent because from my point of view, the result is the same, no matter if your source of information purposefully makes false statements or is doing honest mistakes, as the article said. And then Wikipedia lists uh, five forms of deception. Um, and yeah, let me read to you what, what they say. First one is lies, which is making up of information or giving information that is the opposite or at least very different from the truth. Second one is equivocations, so making an indirect or an ambiguous or contradictory statement. Third is concealments, which is yeah, lying by omitting information that is important or re relevant to the given context. Um, and the fourth and the fifth one are pretty similar, um, being exaggerations and understatements. So it's about overstating or stretching the truth to a certain degree or minimizing um, or downplaying certain aspects. And what you will keep finding when you inform yourself about deception is that it's all about control and manipulation of information. And therefore, this is the core message of this video. If you want to avoid getting deceived, you have to understand where your information originates. If you rely on, single, on a single source, you will allow this source to control you. But the good thing is, it is still you who decides. So you have to, the power to take the decisions. You have the power to take the decision to check other sources. If you ever find a source of information claiming to be the only originator of reliable information, please get suspicious. This is a claim that is usually made to gain control. If the information provided is true and factual, why should it fear scrutiny? If other sources tell lies, where exactly do they lie? I mean, Let's assume your single source of information would lie to you. How would you know? If it makes equivocal statements, how could you recognize? If it conceals important parts, how could you find out? If it exaggerates or understates, how could you possibly see it? If you rely on only one source, this is only possible if you have a single source. If you want to find out the truth, you have to have more than a single source. Many people watching this video, so huge parts of my audience will be Jehovah's Witnesses or former ones. Therefore, let me use an analogy for them, but I think it, it can make sense for, for anyone that grew up in, in a religious context, especially if it's a Christian religious context. For, I think, any or at least most of the allegations made in the judicial system of Jehovah's Witnesses, there are 
at least two witnesses required to yeah, substantiate such allegations. Why so? Well, because single witnesses might either lie or by mistake make false statements. The more witnesses you have, the more reliable is the information where they agree on. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 1 says, On the testimony of two or three witnesses, every matter must be established. And this rule is known as the two-witness rule, especially in the pedophilia context, um, where yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses are under heavy fire because they apply this two-witness rule to this context where it doesn't make any sense at all. But I want you to apply this two-witness rule in a positive way for yourself. Fact check everything of importance. And I do not only talk about Watchtower. Any, in any situation where you take important decisions, See if you can find other sources. But especially when you are coming out of relig religious indoctrination and you battle your way through the jungle of information out there in order to re-establish your worldview or establish your new worldview, be cautious. Do not follow any charismatic figure just because what he or she tells you appears to make sense or because you, you like what they have to say. See if you find people that attempt to debunk them. Listen to what they have to say and see if your new source can withstand scrutiny. Let me give you a personal example. On my way out, I stumbled upon videos from Kent Hovind, which is a pretty famous creationist. And what he said appeared to make sense to me during my search for orientation. I mean, <laughs> I I wanted to yeah, keep my creationist point of view. And he, he provided what he called proofs for creation. At least I thought so, until I found videos debunking him. And this was early in my waking up, I, I admit. Um, it's, it's total nonsense what he says, but he, he presents it in a charismatic way and uh, he, he seems to be scientific. But he's not. So please use the two witness rule for a positive effect. Do not rely on a single witness to base your decisions on. Gather information from multiple sources. Check their sources. Listen to sources holding different positions. And then base your decisions on a solid information base. Thank you for listening and Till next time.